Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reader from the biblicalnutritionist.com and today it's about answering your questions. The questions today are all centered around foods in the Bible. What are the foods in the Bible that we should eat? I love these questions and I love the fact that they're your questions so I know it's what's on your heart and what's on your mind. If you want your question answered, please go to our private Facebook group, Biblical Nutrition Academy. When you go there and sign up to join, then we're going to ask you, what is your question that you would like to have answered? So be ready because many people say, oh, I wasn't ready. I don't know what to ask. That's okay. Put your question in and then we'll answer it here on this video. So today it's all about foods in the Bible. At the end of this video, I want you to stay to the very end because I'm going to give away a gift. And it is my favorite protein powder. It's the GBX protein. And it's the creamiest, such a really good flavor, but not overwhelming and not any of those weird flavors. So I love it. At the end of this video, see how you can get this as a gift as well. Question number one, are beans and lentils a protein that are included in the Daniel fast? This was submitted by Mary. Yes, these are high protein foods. They're high fiber and they're excellent for the Daniel fast, totally. They can also be used in so many different ways. There's so, such a variety to these. You can do it in soups and salads and sauces. You can powder them into a flour and use it as a stabilizer in different foods, even cookies. Now, whether or not you're eating cookies on the Daniel Fast, I don't know. Uh, but we can add these foods to the Daniel Fast and it's gonna help our family to feel full and more satisfied. My favorite recipe in the Healthy Treasures cookbook is the black bean soup. It's just three cans of beans or five cups of cooked beans, one and a half cups of salsa, and then one quart of vegetable broth. That's it. So you cook it till it's heated and then you mix with like a submersion blender, blend it up nice and thick and just a delicious flavor. And then you could top it with some chives and some parsley. And if you're not on the Daniel Fast, you could top it with some cheese. Totally my favorite. Now, if you're not on the Daniel Fast, you could even add cooked you know, meat to it or even chicken and that takes it to another level. So the black bean soup is a must on the Daniel Fast and it's about beans and lentils. Now, also in my cookbook, I have the lentil salad. That would be so delicious to have during the Daniel Fast. It's just so satisfying. Now that does include feta cheese, but you can leave the feta cheese out, or you could find a plant-based cheese, maybe some nutritional yeast to do instead. So definitely include beans and lentils, the satiety and the fiber is going to help your body say, okay, we like that. Well, I hope you have enjoyed the Daniel Fast course. It is so packed with useful information. Even when you're not on the Daniel Fast, the recipes alone are worth the small investment for this course because they are becoming just regular recipes that I have in my menu all of the time. They're very good. And I'm so glad that we have included even more recipes than we originally had. And if you have this course, if you purchase it, you get all of our upgrades, all of our additions. Okay, so let's go to question number two. What are your thoughts about plant-based diets versus omnivores ones? This was submitted by Jake. And this is a really good question because it is out there. It is without a doubt that the plant foods are gonna be the highest in delivering antioxidants for health prevention and especially an immunity boost. Scripture mentions meat, it does. Jesus ate meat such as lamb and fish. So this is totally an option. But we need to look at the meats that we're buying. Meats must be raised in an environment that is good for the animal. And then when they go into uh, processing to the butcher, they need there needs to be a stress-free environment. And how they butcher that, that's another issue. It's about what the animals were fed. Were they allowed to graze in a natural outdoors or were they being fed GMO grains? What was the stress for the animal? Because what the animal deals with in stress is going to be um, it's going to be indicative in the meat and the meats that we're eating. There's different hormones that are released when animals are stressed that go straight to the meat. Now, you know, just need to understand, yes, plant-based is going to give you your greatest boost of nutrition. Many people can do well with eating meat and some people don't do well with eating meat. It's with, that's true with any food. Beans and lentils are a high protein, high fiber. When we eat meat, we get the protein, we get high protein, but we don't get the fiber. So we have to make sure we are supplementing the fiber with huge salads and other foods like that. 
there are benefits to beans and lentils that you don't get in meat. There are benefits to meat that you don't get in beans and lentils. When you really want to look at this, go through the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study. You can do this as just the book. You can do it as a course. It's going to take you from Genesis to Revelation. Really look at the foods that God created. What did he call good? Good meaning excellent of its kind. And what did he say to avoid? That's really the list that we should follow versus man's latest omnivore, paleo, keto, all of that. That's just man trying to figure out God's design. Yet God's design is always going to be our first place to look and understanding what did he create for us? What form of that food did he want us to eat it in? And I mean, look at bread. We can eat grains or we can eat bread. And bread's totally talked about in scripture over and over and over how we can benefit from it. But we only benefit from it because we freshly mill it ourselves. Otherwise, man has manipulated too much of the bread. Same is true of the meat. If you know a farmer and you know how he's raised the animal, what he's fed the animal, how he's butchered the animal, then you can be satisfied in knowing, okay, that's a healthy meat that I can eat. These are just, you know, some common answers to this, yet it all comes back to the simplicity of scripture. God never complicates, man complicates. God gives us the good, man gives us the manipulated. So look at it that way. And thanks for asking that question. Number three, is sprouted organic wheat different from unsprouted in the way gluten affects a person? This was submitted by Tammy Ace. So first, I wish I knew if you're eating store-bought sprouted bread or milling your own and sprouting the grains, because this is this is where the difference can totally begin. And that is the first difference we need to look at. I do not recommend bread from the stores since what you make fresh is 1000% better. Second, gluten is a protein and sprouted grains are seeds that form from the embryo to grow into a plant. So the growth phase of that seed is going to use some of the proteins, especially the different proteins that combine to make gluten. So sprouted grains are going to have less gluten content, but gluten is what is developed by the, manip the manipulation of the dough. So the, yes, the grains are going to eat some of those proteins to mature the embryo. That's how it works. So we just need to look at this. Now some people tolerate sprouted grains better, but unsprouted grains are still very helpful as well. So since you brought up the subject of sprouted grains, it's important to realize biblical bread was not sprouted. It was not. There are some key authors out there such as Sally Fallon and Jordan Rubin that teach that grains were always sprouted in scripture. No, they weren't. And I really want you to watch my Ezekiel bread video about more understanding of that. They talked about how they bundled the stalks of grain together before bringing them inside. True, this allowed the grains to start the process of sprouting, false, which made them healthful, more healthful. Not always true. This is just not always true. You cannot start the process of sprouting without finishing it. And you cannot mill wet grain. Wet grain does not store. So think back in biblical days, grains were stored up to seven years. How do we know this? The story of Joseph. Remember the story, those days of Joseph, uh, yeah, he was able to take that dream and apply it and store grain for seven years. And then everyone in that country was satisfied. So also watch the video I did on the Ezekiel bread mix and the Ezekiel grain and how some people misinterpret that as being a sprouted grain. It's not. I also have a really long blog on my website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com, and we're going to put a link to that down below. The complete answer to sprouting bread and also the phytic acid question as well will be answered in that blog. So please go and read that. Question number four, I read from many that common vegetables have lectins in them that are not good for humans. What are your thoughts on lectins? And this was submitted by Sherry. Another hot topic. So lectins is a theory. It's a theory that lectins cause harm. It's just a theory. It's not a proven fact. Now, in five to 10 years from now, we may know more about this. It's very similar to that other theory, glycemic index. It was a theory and it was proven wrong. Well, then came glycemic load, which is a little bit more accurate. Yet in the meantime, everyone quit eating carrots and watermelon. Well, carrots and watermelon were not the villain. It was the theory that was the villain. So always look at the three principles. They're timeless. Number one, eat the foods that God called good for us. Number two, eat the foods as close to his design before they're altered beyond their benefit for us. And number three, don't let any food become an addiction. 
I will say that many people are missing the enzymes to metabolize foods such as beans and lentils or breads or sprouted grains, and this causes upset. It's not that the lectins that cause the problems, it's the lack of enzymes. And unlike the theory of the lectins being harmful, which is unproven at this point, the study and research shows enzymes are proven and they come from God. They come from foods that God designed. So we teach these principles extensively in the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study. It's a phenomenal course or even just reading the book. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Discover the foods in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and then you will understand exactly how he designed you, how he created these foods to work beautifully in your body. It's an incredible Bible study. I really hope you read that. Now we're at the end, and I want to share with you who I'm going to be giving a gift away to. This person entered a review on Amazon. She left her name, so we have a name to use. When you leave a review on Amazon or Barnes & Noble and you don't leave a name, then we don't have a name to choose from. So think about that next time you leave a review, and I hope you do. This person left a review, and also she's going to get the GBX protein powder. It is totally a very creamy protein powder, none of those strange flavors that are out there. It's not gritty, it's just creamy. It mixes really well with any vegetables or fruits you want to put in it, and that's why I like it. I also use it in baking. It's that easy to use. So Autumn Hamblin, you have 60 days from the posting of this video to send us an email at Annette at thebiblicalnutritionist.com to claim your prize and your gift that we're giving you. And I just want to thank you for leaving a review. So Autumn, if you live in the U.S., we'll be sending you this gift. If you're outside the U.S., then we have other options to give you a gift as well, just as a matter of saying thanks. So be sure and send us an email and mention the code QA74. Thanks for watching. And for the rest of you, thank you for watching, submitting your questions so that I can answer them here on this YouTube channel. And also always know that God loves you. He loved you from the moment of conception and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And no matter what has happened in your life, he's there for you. He's waiting for you and he desires a personal relationship with you. Thanks for watching.